know, sometimes you say, well, a particular continent is in mourning, but this time around, for the first time in living history, we're getting to see that the world truly is in mourning. Welcome to Sunrise Daily. Good morning. I'm Suleiman Alede. Good morning. I'm Maupe Ogun. Good morning. I'm Nel Taibi. Well, uh, the story broke and world leaders and everyone and anyone have been talking about the death of the Madiba, uh, that is Nelson Mandela. And a whole lot has been said about this great individual because uh, they say, well, what he's been able to achieve, no man in living history has been able to achieve all of that while well, coming out of jail for after spending over 27 years, going almost 28 years, and a whole lot of people thought he was going to be bitter about it, but he came and the words on his lips were peace and reconciliation. He did all of that from the struggles in the 80s to the peaceful moves he made in the 90s. Nelson Mandela finally leaving the stage in a grand, grand and beautiful style. An icon. He, there's the, the, he's been described as one who took history in his hands and made history. The first black African president who stood and fought the better part of his life. He fought to a standstill to end apartheid. He fought for the freedom, not just for him. At first it began as fighting for the freedom of the black man. But be, he went beyond the freedom of the black man to freedom for humanity. He was, he's an icon, as, as he's been described as by some world leaders, that the, his death marks the, the end of an era. I mean, he's one man that, has, that he's, his life has gone beyond the shores of Africa, around the globe. Everyone's talking about the world as it is. It's stand, it's at a standstill. Yeah, you, you know, a whole lot happened last night at MAP and uh, uh, because uh, almost everyone was up following the developments mm -hmm. of this particular story. And uh, we also saw what the President of the United States has said, uh, uh, President Obama, he said, well, he was actually one of his, uh, one of those who actually influenced uh, his uh, thinking and his move in life. And he actually participated in one of the biggest uh, rally against apartheid then as a young boy. Uh, and even Andrew Young also spoke, uh, well, beautifully about this man. He said, no, while he was in prison, he never met him. He never uh, got to know him before he went to jail. But he met so many of his contemporaries, and he said so many fantastic things about him. Or, uh, you know, if you look at it, uh, well, changing. And, and now we get into here that even it was his teacher who named him Nelson, because his name originally uh, meant troublemaker, uh, and he was actually well uh, paying uh, yeah, in, yeah, the yes of a whole lot of people who were actually. Uh, perpetrating injustice uh, mm -hmm. on people irrespective of where they are mm -hmm. and when finally he came he said well this is uh, our own South Africa we need everyone irrespective of your color and race and uh, well that actually changed the course of event uh, in that particular country and a whole lot of other places and it might also interest you to note uh, Marpa, that this also happened in the time where now that, that's the first South African black president also getting uh, a beautiful words from the first black president also in the United States of America. Two great things happening all at the same time. Uh, for me, I think, I think we're just blessed to have actually seen this great moment because we were also alive to have seen uh, his incarceration and when he left prison and he became the first black president of South Africa and finally, well, taken about also in our own time in a very beautiful way because beautiful because we, we, we finally got to see him. How many grandchildren did he finally have? 20. 20 and he grandchildren. left at 95. Yes, and he left at 95. And he has a growing army of great grandchildren. You know, Suleiman, it's very hard to get emotional when the person is not your family. But I know that this is one death that will get plenty of people thousands, millions, nay, billions of people around the world very emotional. When Absolutely. You, when you read about the life of this man, I mean, it, it is a rare gift that we lived in his time. We, we, we got to see him in, in person. And I think that he, were, he was a gift of God to the world. I mean, and God was also gracious to him in the sense mm -hmm. that, I mean, how many people get to fight for freedom and even enjoy to, 
live to see the fruit of what it is that mm. they have fought for. Uh, in many ways, I think that, yes, we will celebrate Nelson Mandela because in, in Africa, when a man dies at 95, what it calls for is not really mourning, yeah. but a celebration of life. And I think that that is where a lot of people will stand. We have fondest memories of Nelson Mandela. I mean, a host of us, young people, you see a long walk to freedom, you want to buy it mm -hmm. immediately because you, you want to know more about this man. You, you see all the books written by other people who have other bi written um, biographies of him and you also want to you know buy those books because you want to know when exactly push them how does anyone get to live that type of life i have sat down personally and i've thought about the personal cost to himself as a as an individual who's living and his family i mean you look at a man who's gone through three marriages had you know 20 he had six right. children personally whose lives he couldn't actually live in i mean so for those children they also paid the sacrifice of not having a father who was around most of the time you also had see the grandchildren but you know god has a beautiful way of working look at this man who wasn't there for his own children now had the time to be there for his grandchildren yeah. and his great grandchildren i think that you know for me it's just an inspiration there is really nothing more to say other than and this man lived the life of inspiration. And how many of us can actually, you know, be inspired by him? For me, the message is to the youths. The message is to young people. The host of people say it's to leaders. I agree. But I also believe that, uh, should we say that leaders, were they born or did they aspire to become great like that? What can young people get well, I think that uh, inspiration, uh, in, inspiration is a word, Malpe, mm. and a whole lot. And uh, also celebration and regret. Regret because uh, some say we'll never, well, we'll see a man like Nelson Mandela in a long time to come because a whole lot uh, to say about this great man. Now, let's look at how that particular story was uh, uh, broken. broken to us because uh, it actually came from none other than the president of South Africa. So the family had to alert him and he had to do what he did. Painful, you can actually see it from uh, his countenance, but a, a very brief and a short one. President Zuma. Fellow South Africans, our beloved Nelson Holishasha Mandela, the founding president of our democratic nation, has departed. He passed on peacefully. In the around 2050, on the 5th of December 2013. He is now resting. He is now at peace. Our nation has lost its greatest son. Our people have lost a father. Although we knew that this day would come. Nothing can diminish our sense of a profound and enduring loss. His tireless struggle for freedom and him the respect of the world. His humility his compassion and his humanity and him their love. Our thoughts and prayers are with the Mandela family. To them we owe a debt of gratitude. 